7,500 varieties of tomatoes out there and every single one of them follow this rule. So let's talk about it. This video was requested by you guys on the Geek Crew. You wanted to know if you can harvest around the blushing period, meaning before things are bright red, while things are still firm, the green period, essentially when can you harvest them and not affect the texture, the flavor, etc., and so forth. So that's what we're gonna talk about here today. And we're gonna talk about also why commercial varieties from the grocery store taste like junk. There's a reason for it. It has nothing to do with fertilizers or pesticides or varieties. It literally has to do with how they're harvesting it. And I will give you some industry secrets that are going to shock you, I promise. So step one of this entire discussion is why would you harvest a tomato early. Why would you harvest when it's green, blushing, and not yet red? There's several different reasons for this. Number one is your next week or two. So it's a known fact that Canada in some places is about to go through a little bit of a heat wave. And if you did not know, tomatoes, once they are 85 degrees Fahrenheit or 29, 30 degrees Celsius or more, the ripening process stops. Yes, folks. So if you expect to get a tomato from day one of the flower to day 20, on day 20 or 25, you expect to harvest, and now you have a whole bunch of days above 30, it delays the harvest and it can seriously delay it by a lot. It could be five days, 10 days, 20. It literally, it could be a lot. So that would be a reason to harvest a little bit earlier. The other reasons I think are pretty obvious. We have frost, we have disease, pests, animals, horrible climatic events, which seem to be the norm in Canada between the hail in Calgary and the literal tornadoes in Saskatchewan. Channel, we have gardening in Canada, AKA Dorothy came all the way from Kansas to share her insight. Sun skulls is another one. I, f I forget that one quite often because it's like a traumatic PTSD event for me as a redhead. Tomatoes and meat, we, 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 we share a deep connection. So I know you guys came from the science. It's the only reason you bless me with your presence, Geek Crew. And so we need to talk about two chemicals. We have liposine and we have ethylene. Now ethylene, I feel like we all know the, the, the get up with that. It is a gas and that gas is emitted from tomatoes. It's emitted from several different fruits. And if you have a tomato, that is emitting this gas next to tomatoes that are not emitting the gas yet, they will ripen them. If you put a tomato beside another fruit or vegetable and it emits this gas, it will ripen those tomatoes around it. Liposine is slightly different, but it is also involved in kind of the process of ripening. And that is what gives it the color. So whether it's yellow or um, orange or red, liposine is, it's a carotenoid, so it's, it's, what makes carrots yellow as well, um, that helps affect the actual physical color. Now, both of these chemicals are present in the tomato right off the bat, so long as it's kind of out of that green stage, and it can also be in the green stage as well. So that is something to think about because the tomatoes typically, when they're like this color on the outside, not quite red, but, and seem under ripe, Fun fact, the inside is bright red because that is where the liposine begins. Now, industry secret number one I'm going to drop on you guys is that commercial growing is able to and will harvest their tomatoes at green. Now we're gonna talk about stages here in a little bit, but this stage is what we call mature green, meaning it is at the size it needs to be, it is at the shape it needs to be, it is just not red within any stretch of the imagination. The reason why we harvest at this time is because it's uniform and it's tougher. So it's easier to ship, it's easier to move around. It's not nefarious, it's literally for practicality of feeding the entire world. You don't want to end up with fresh ketchup at the produce aisle. You want a semi-firm tomato. Everyone likes firm, what can I say? But that's how they, they achieve it. Now the way that they get these things to mature and the reason why you yourself may think twice about ha harvesting a green tomato, is they use ethylene gas. Yes, folks, they put them in a room and they pump that sucker full of ethylene gas. And inside of that chamber, things begin to turn red. Make sense? Great. Okay, so that's how they get them that color. Now, the reason why they taste like junk is because the mature green stage has mature seeds in it. Don't get me wrong, you can take those seeds, and make them into seed saving project. They'll work just fine. 
but the flavor is not there. And the texture is actually not even there either. So because of that, you have tomatoes that just kind of taste a little bit like junk. So it actually it's really nothing to do with the variety. San Marzino is a San Marzino for the most part. Um, it actually has to do with when it's harvested. So my recommendation is mature green avoid it the only time i would grab these off the vine is if you were about to hit a frost period that is when i would go in and grab them or something else horrific is happening in the garden where you need to get them off now that would be the case when i would remove those now the next stages is stages two through six so there's six st stages total and the bulk of between the green and the right mush is blushing. So there's different stages of blushing. Stage one is 10% of the outside of your tomato is showing some form of color change, whether it's yellow, orange, or red. Now at this stage, your seeds are fully developed. Your flavor is actually fully established for the most part within reason particularly at that 10% uh, range, things are maybe just a little bit not there, but they're getting pretty darn close. The moment you even get above that at all, flavor is established, texture is established, size is established, all of it. Meaning that if you harvest at this stage and you don't put them in the fridge, we'll talk about how to harvest these properly because you actually wanna leave a little bit of the stem on as well in an ideal world. This will not affect the flavor. It will not affect the texture and you will have a perfectly fine garden tomato that tastes identical to if you let it sit on the vine and rot and let your squirrels get at it. And for being totally honest, though, I'm, I'm down for feeding squirrels because they are cute. They're cute. Kind of like your girl here. So the other really interesting thing that actually takes place once these guys begin to blush is they actually begin to separate themselves from the mother plant. And the way that they do this is with the abscission layer, the plant knuckle, uh, some people call it like the pedial stump, whatever. Bunch of different names. Obsession layer is actually like the name that we use in like scientific, anyways. That is beginning to shrink. It shrinks up. Just like Meet the Fockers movie. Don't tell me you kept his umbilical cord. Of course not. That's Greg's fault. As that begins to shrivel, as you can imagine, nutrients and water are slowly restricted. And this restriction is cutting it off from the mother plant, meaning that tomato, very obviously, once it starts blushing, does not need nutrients and it does not need water. Now, some water, when it's excessively uh, introduced to your soil system, can be uptaken and that's when you get splitting. Yeah, no one wants splitting. So that is the reason why you get that. Obviously, uh, changes in temperature and that sort of thing can result in the splitting in the blossom and rot at this stage as well. But this begins to shrink up, shrink up, shrink up. And you guys, I know you've seen these on plants. The reason why I know you've seen these on plants is because every single one of us have always walked by or have walked by a tomato plant and gave it a little bit of a, a bump, kind of like you're in the high school hallways and the tomatoes pop off. And you're like, why, why would that, why would that pop off? It's popping off because it's just completely disconnected from the mother plant. So it's really doing nothing outside other than staying warm which kind of actually enhances the flavor too. So if you kind of want to enhance the flavor more, put it on a windowsill that's sunny, well, you have a little bit better, better tastier uh, tomato plant. So now we know when we can harvest them. At the first blush, we can get them off the vine and bring them indoors. You don't want to freeze them and you don't want to can them at this stage. You want them to continue to mature on your countertops at room temperature. Don't put them in the fridge or anything like that. Now, when you remove them, you may or may not want to include that abscission layer. So that knuckle can be included in the process of harvesting if you like, completely optional. But keep in mind that that little bit of stem between the tomato and the knuckle is still technically a part of the physical tomato. And it obviously can help with kind of this top area, which I do find to be like the first little honey area for like fungus gnats and stuff indoors. So if you leave that little abscission layer down on, you can sometimes keep the gnats down in the house long enough to let these guys do their job. And if it pops off and you harvest, and quite often when you harvest, it naturally pops up off at that abscission layer, it's good, you're good. Now, if you wanna know 
how I grew tomatoes this size and bigger. I swear to God, I have bigger ones right now. You'll want to check out my video on the different ways I planted my tomatoes this year and how two of them failed horribly, but the rest of them made a huge difference in my, my tomato growing game. So, and by the way, that's what Google says to watch. So listen to them. They're the overlords, not me.